Interesting. Let's see if I can actually pull this up. I don't even know if the audio is working. There we go. Oh, it is working. Cool. Uh, all right, this isn't working. Let me try this. Copy. Cool. I'm going to need to build a thumbnail for this. Oh, well, I'll do that later. It's different than, you know, doing recorded content. It's been a while since I've live streamed. Uh, hold on. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Siobhan, how's it going? <clears throat> just hang on. I'm just getting set up. It's really a test stream. I just wanted to see if I can actually stream with my current setup. I don't know if it's possible. Uh, so I've just figured I'd do a, a simple exercise in Houdini on a project that I'm actually working. So, uh, let's see here, Paul. Alrighty. Let's just do that for now. Post to Facebook. All right, cool. All right, also I'm gonna record this. So let's start that recording. Awesome. Hey, what's up everybody? <laughs> so I'm also recording this as well too. So if it seems like uh, um, I'm not talking directly to you, yeah, I use OBS. I'm also recording directly in the camera, so. But uh, yeah, we're gonna jump into Houdini right now. So I actually don't have any Houdini tutorials on this channel yet. This is gonna be the first one. I might record it separately, but we'll see how that goes. But uh, let's jump into that. If it'll allow me. Interesting. I had a Houdini crash earlier. There we go. Perfect. All right, cool. So yeah, we're gonna jump into Houdini right now. Uh, and for this tutorial, we are going to be modeling a light bright. Um, I actually have already done this. Um, I'm, I'm actually in the middle of a project for this and I thought it was really cool and I wanted to share this. I thought it'd be a great idea to use it for the first um, Houdini tutorial that we do. So I'm gonna wait a few more seconds. I might have some friends pop in here. What's up, Bryn? You just got Cinema 4D? Yeah, dude. So I just, I stopped paying for my license. Um, I just like Houdini. Uh, Cinema 4D is great though. But I, it's funny, I'm on this project right now and I actually had to get somebody to render it for me because I'm, I don't want to pay for a render engine right now. So how you doing though, dude? Also, I think I've, um, I've purposely set the latency really, really high. So if I don't respond to you guys like right away, it's because I increase the latency so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. So your feedback is much appreciated because this is a test stream really. So And yeah, I am recording this separate. But I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna record it offline here as well. Um once all is said and done. 
You are working on it. That's right. You told me. Are you going with the um, the RTXs, the new ones? The uh, 3080 plus? Dude, they're insanely expensive right now. It's ridiculous. All that Bitcoin farming. Uh, let's go here. It's copy. Did we ever tie in? No, we did not. Sorry, I'm also, I'm checking out the Discord right now. I've been popping in and out. Um, yeah. I'm only going to be live for maybe an hour tops. Um, if that. Hey, that's good. That's good. Yeah. So, um, the machine I'm using right now that I'm streaming with is a uh, Ryzen nine, um, a 3,900. So, I mean, the dude, they're so good. Um, I think, well, actually here's the thing. It's a Ryzen nine, 3,900, uh, CPU. And I did not go with the Ryzen GPU though. Um, I actually went with a, a 2070 super chipset, which is perfect for VFX. If you're just getting started. I mean, I, at the time I wasn't working from home now I am. So maybe I, I need I need to look into a stronger engine, but yeah. So anyways, let's go and get started. Um, I am in Houdini right now, guys. For those of you guys that have never seen Houdini before, this is the basic UI that you will see the first time you jump in. In fact, this is the main layout that you are going to see. Um, I'm not going to go through the entire UI. That's what you can get in a school setting or in other videos that you can find on YouTube. For me, I'm going to attack what we're doing here today right away uh we're gonna be building a light bright if you don't know what a light bright is if you pull it up over here uh no not in houdini a light bright simply put is this toy that kids used to use long before ipads existed uh and they look a lot like this you can make items like this right um, I know I had one when I was growing up. Here's a good example right here. So that's a light bright. And we're going to model these pegs and the pegboard uh, procedurally. So you got quattros. Yeah, I mean, those are still solid. The good thing about GPU render farms, it's like you're setting and forgetting it. You're not trying to multitask. But once you hit render, it's off to the side and you're actually working on your dedicated machine, right? So. All right, so here we go. So let's go to get started. Um, right off the bat, we know what the light bright looks like, the pegs look like. It's just a simple tube, so we want to model that. But then I also want to use that tube to drive more information. We are not going to do any VEX because I think that's very boring material to watch unless you're interested in it. Uh, so let's go to get started. I'm going to start uh, by jumping over here into my object level of, my, of the network. We're going to work in SOPs. Only SOPs, by the way, for this tutorial. I'm not going to do any dynamics. Um, for one, it's CPU intensive. That'd be very boring to watch. So let's go ahead and create a simple geometry node. I'm going to jump in there. Actually, let's name these so we stay organized. We're going to call this peg. We're going to call this peg. And uh, just hang on one second. I think my knees try to like break into the room real quick. So I was making sure. All right, cool. So yeah, we're going to call this peg. Let's jump in. Let's go ahead and model a tube by just hitting the tab and typing in tube. I want this to be a polygon. I also want to have end caps and I don't need 12 columns. So let's keep this simple. So I'm actually going to go to six uh, and let's zoom all the way out. Just holding down the alt or option key if you're on a Mac and just using my uh, left mouse button to uh, pull in and out. And then what I'm going to do here is I just want to scale this up and then we're going to plant it up. But knowing what we know as far as height, uh, the height is going to be twice the location of the origin. So what I want to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to copy this parameter. I'm going to paste relative reference and I'm going to type in divide by two. So now what's going to happen is no matter what I do to my height, Oh, I should actually uh, do the right channel here. Let's just delete this real quick. Copy the right parameter. Paste relative reference. 
and divide that by two. Perfect. And now it's going to plant, um, no matter how high, no how tall I make this, it's going to plant it on origin. That's what we want. So in this case, let's just do a height of 10. Uh, let's do a radius scale of, let's say, 2.5. Yeah, that's a little big. Let's do 1.5. I'm actually not going to make this to the same scale that I'm actually doing the current animation that I'm building. Uh, but this is going to work for now. And then even though I just have this uh, tube that I built, I still want to export it in a null. So I'm going to type in out. And this will make sense why I'm doing this here in a few. We're going to call this peg base. I like to color my nulls. All right, let's go back up to the object level. And then we're going to do another geo node. And let's build that. Let's build the layout of what our pegboard is going to look like, and then we can build the actual light bright afterwards. So we're going to call this geo array. Yeah, that's why I'll buy a separate computer and use those only to render. Plus computer. Get back at it. No, it's good, dude. That's why I decided to live stream this because uh, I, I want to see my setup, but also this is part of live streaming is the engagement in chat. Um, and I, I need to start cycling in live streams, so. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so let's jump in here and I'm going to type in an object merge. So what this is going to do, if you remember that null we just created, I can now bring that tube into this network at this level in my geo level of my SOP network. So we're going to call this peg input. We're going to come up here uh, and we're going to click this icon. And if you go to peg, you have the null here out. Just click it, hit accept. And now the peg is in here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to build the array. Now, what we're going to do later to decide what our light bright looks like is we're going to use an object to create a Boolean. But we don't want to create a Boolean on the tube because what will end up happening, and I'll show you what will happen. Let's say if I do a box here. And let's do a Boolean. Okay. And let's uh, scale this way up. And if I do this Boolean here, you'll notice that it's cutting into this tube. Okay? See this better? I'm going to turn off. And there it is. It's cutting into the tube. And we don't want that to happen because a light bright's not half of a peg. It's a full peg. So we need to come up with a system that will prevent us from deleting half of a peg. If we're going to delete a peg, we want to delete the whole peg. So to do that... We need to actually work not in primitives, but we need to work in points, which means I need to convert this to points. Now, I have a simple workaround for this. It's actually really easy, and so we're going to do it. So I'm just going to type in a clean just to make sure that if I do make any changes, since this is procedural, um, I get rid of anything that I don't need, right? And then we're going to type in a blast node, and it's going to delete this entire object. That's okay. We're going to bring it back. Okay, so if we come to clean real quick, let's... Set our viewpoint to clean. I'm going to look at our primitive IDs. So let's look at the uh, numbers and we'll notice that the top primitive is zero and the bottom is one. Okay. So that means what I want to do is I actually want to keep the bottom one right here in this case because we're going to use that to drive a locator information. We're going to convert it. So let's go ahead and come over here. I want to type in one and then I want to delete non selected. And if I look at the blast node, this primitive stays. That's the only primitive I need. Okay. The next thing I want to do is I want to convert this to a circle. So let's type in a convert node to add that at the end of the chain. And then let's convert it to a circle. The reason why I convert it to a circle is because now I'm getting rid of all the points that I no longer need. This next operation, this next stop node that I'm going to add will not work if I have too many points. So what I'm going to do is now is do that operation. It's an add node. Okay. And uh, simply, I'm just going to delete geometry, but keep the points. Remember, we got rid of all the points, like I just said. So when I do this, I now have reduced that entire tube. Ah, did I do it again? I've now reduced that entire tube to just this point right here. It might be difficult to see on YouTube. That's why I was trying to zoom in. There it is. Just this one point. And you can see it if I, I put the ID up. There it is, zero. Okay. And now I have something that I can do later down the line to say, hey, I want to put a tube at this point. Now let's decide where these points go. So the next thing I want to do 
is I want to do a copy transform. Okay. Actually, let's actually put a copy with transform. There we go. Cool. So now I have the copy node down. And this will allow me to create a bunch of copies. For right now, I'll just create two. I'm just going to use the grid on this case. Um, I'm going to go, uh, I say I'm going to go th every three to show you how this works. And then we can shrink that down here in a few. Keep in mind, Houdini is completely procedural, so this will work out in our favor. So what I want to do is I want to work in the x-axis. And let's just go, uh, let's go by one. Okay, there it is. So actually, I'm going to go by threes. So we're going to go to three here. Yeah, this will work. So every three, now nah, we could probably go four. Let's go every four. Okay, and now that I have that, I'm just going to do, do this by about, let's say, 25 times. Okay, so now I have a line of points. Okay. The next thing I want to do is I want to take those points and I want to copy them again. And let's go ahead and go down. I'm going to do this horizontal copy. And we're going to do this vertical copy. It's not really vertical, but if we're looking straight down, that's exactly what's happening. And now I want to translate down. In this case, I want to go on twos on the Z axis. Uh, I probably go way more than that. Actually, let's go fours. Yeah, this will fives. All right, let's go fives. All right, so now we're gonna go fives in the z-axis down. So what this is gonna allow me to do, and let me uh, so you guys can see this better. Uh, take the webcam off for a second, so you guys see this better. I am going to offset the every other row. So now what I can do, I'm keeping this a smaller project. Cool. I now have one part of my array, but now what I want to do, knowing that this is five, so we got to go by half, I'm going to do another copy and transform. And we're going to go 2.5 down this time. And I also am going to offset this by 2. So now what's going on is we have this hex pattern that's about to show up. And this will look more apparent again here in a few. So let's create a new null. So we can bring this array elsewhere. Call this out. Array points let's jump back up to the object level let's turn off that array because we don't need it anymore and let's type in a new geo node and this is where we're going to finish the whole thing okay and we're going to call this light bright let's do an object merge we're going to bring that peg back in same peg as before yep. another object merge and we're going to bring in that array that we just created out array points, except. And what I'm going to do simply is I'm going to do a copy to points. Oops. A copy to points here. Okay. Geometry I want to copy and the location I want to copy it to. I turn all of this information off now. And there we go. We've created light brights. And that's it. That's that's pretty much how this whole process is done. But maybe we want to draw an image, right? And um, in this case, I may have a letter I'm going to use for this uh, example. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a file node. I'm going to bring in a letter here that I can use. Come over here. Let's go to... I, have, I, um, I don't have a project set right now because I'm just doing this tutorial. I do have a project that I've been working on. Let's 
Give it a second. Cool. There it goes. So I actually have... So I have an AI here that I can use. Let's just use the letter P here. Okay. In this case, the clean. Uh, polycut. Actually, not polycut. Sorry. Well, cool. this will work right now. Actually, I don't want to waste time like cutting this up. I'm just going to use a box just to show you guys what I'm doing. So now I have this uh, box here. Let's uh, increase the size. Let's do 25. And let's go ahead and... Copy parameter, paste relative references, and divide that by two. Oops. Paste relative reference. Divide that by two. Delete channels. Yeah, forget it. What's up, Dom? How you doing, dude? All right, I'm going to use a transform here. I'm going to type in a group node. Let's name this group node um, array iso group. I'm going to do a bounding region object. That means we need to transform this into... There already is. Helps if I turn this into points. Cool. So here we go. Now, if I transform this up, what we're going to do is we're going to paint these points now. And this is going to also show you how amazingly procedural this software is. So if I come over here, and we're going to copy to points. Instead of copying to all the points, we want to set this group now. And so we come over here and do array iso group. Only what's in the group that this group is creating by this box right here will be shown. For instance, if I increase the scale, more pegs are going to be shown. Less, less pegs are going to be shown. And remember at the very beginning, I showed you guys and I told you guys... Um, yeah, dude. So I'm in Houdini and uh, I just doing a quick test stream real quick to see if my setup can handle it at home. And I figured I'd do it in Houdini on a simple project. And since Houdini is a little bit more intense, uh, it's a 3D package and I'm just modeling a light bright essentially. Um, these are pegs right here. They're not rendered yet, but these are just pegs and uh, I'm modeling a light bright and I'm just showing how you could create shapes by just creating a tube, duplicating it and, you know, creating parameters. And so, and like I said earlier in the video, if you have, you know, this box here, it'll cut into whatever geometry is there. And we didn't want that to happen. We wanted to cut into the location of where that geometry is going to be before we add the geometry. And that's what we've done, right? So we have the peg here. And then we have this array. And we copied these pegs to this array, but we only copied it to the areas we want them to show up. So I can create whatever image I want now. To give you guys an idea, if I bring in, let's see if I have another file that I can use. Uh, actually, the S is probably a pretty good one here. 
Give it a second to load. Yeah, that's going to be perfect. Let's do a transform. Rotate this on the x-axis 90 degrees. Mm, 180. 270, if I can do math. Perfect. Now, I do a poly extrude. In fact, let's lower the scale here a little bit. Let's do a distance. Do another. Do another transform here. Let's move it to around where the box is. And now we drew an S with that shape. So yeah, I just wanted to show this off real quick. That's pretty much how I procedurally modeled this light bright that you guys are about to see in a couple of days. I'm re-recording this video as a tutorial for to be released next week. Um, I have a couple other. I have another video I gotta record like right now for tomorrow. But yeah, so that's where it's at. I just wanted to test the live stream. So the actual project that this I developed this for. Um, it's, it's for the church. Uh, it's straight up for the church. I did a motion design for the next sermon series at the church and I used this system to do it. Um, I, per I have a friend right now who is uh, rendering it. Um, I just sent him the, uh, the model essentially. And he's just sent me some an update too. Uh, what it is? That's why I seem distracted. This looks so good. Always working, man. I'm always working. So, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. That's how this system works. Like I said, I didn't want to be live for very long. I think I've been live for almost an hour already, and that wasn't my intention. Um, that's not true. It's probably been like 25 minutes. I was getting ready to go live an hour ago. But yeah, so uh, I actually have something important I got to attend to here pretty soon for work. But um, yeah, I just wanted to test this whole setup up and see if it was even possible to live stream. So... I'll talk to you guys here in a little bit. Please be sure to like and subscribe to this video and to this channel. Uh, take a look around. I've been releasing tutorials about three times a week. Uh, feel free to tell your friends as well if it's something that you're new to or if you have a team that's learning how to edit, create content, videos, and After Effects, Premiere, DaVinci. Um, I hope to be a resource for you guys. So please be sure to uh, take a look.